So Ben Shapiro weighed in on um, Joe Biden's new soft vaccine mandate. I call it soft because he's giving people the option, businesses with 100 employees or more, either get vaccinated or take a test every week and show a negative result. I think that's perfectly reasonable. Um, ben Shapiro, not so much. Look at the words he decides to use to describe what Biden did here. Let's be real about this. Joe Biden is a failed president. He's a failed president. He failed in Afghanistan and he blames everybody else. He has failed on the economy and he blames everybody else. And he has failed on COVID. And so he blames everybody else. And what this necessitates is Joe Biden making policy moves that are unlikely to result in any sort of serious improvement for the American people, but are simply designed to shift blame away from himself. So just like the Americans stuck in Afghanistan eventually said the administration are there because they want to be there, right? it's their fault that they are stuck there, not our fault for running the worst design surrender in modern American history. Nope, it's, it's really not about that. It's about the Americans stuck there. It's their fault. In the same way, Joe Biden's failure to prevent the, the vaccine, uh, the vaccine mandates and the mask mandates from being promulgated in blue areas and therefore shutting down the economy, his unwillingness to recognize when we have reached the end of a pandemic and it has now just become endemic, his failures there have now necessitated that he take this extremely harsh action that is unlikely to ever be implemented because, frankly, no one is going to comply. So we'll get into the policy of this in just one second and, and why I say that this thing is never going to be implemented on a wide scale, why it is likely to be struck down, why it's almost unenforceable, even were it not to be struck down. But Last night, Joe Biden made the most authoritarian move that I have seen in the last 10, 15, 20 years of American politics. I'm having a hard time pegging it exactly because we've seen authoritarian moves before. Very often, it turns out, Democratic presidents have a bad habit of saying, I don't have the power to do X. And then five seconds later, they just do it. So you remember Barack Obama said over and over and over, I don't have the power to simply stop enforcing immigration law. And then he just did it. And you'll remember that Joe Biden said, I don't have the power to issue an eviction moratorium via the Centers for Disease Control, and then he just did it. Well, you'll recall that this administration has over and over and over said they do not have the power to issue any sort of vaccine mandate. And it is dictatorial, authoritarian stuff. It really is amazing. What's amazing, Ben, is your description of events, because it is wildly, wildly misleading. A mandate would be, you have to get the vaccine, that's the end of the conversation. That is not what Joe Biden did. He said, either get the vaccine. Businesses with 100 employees or more either get the vaccine or get tested once a week. Why is everybody leaving out that important piece of context? That changes everything. In fact, it changes it from something I wouldn't support to something I definitely support. I don't know why everybody's leaving this out. Mainstream media keeps saying vaccine mandate, vaccine mandate, vaccine mandate. You got to get a paragraph three in every article for them to say, or you don't actually have to get the vaccine. You could just take a test. Okay. Then you have people who some lefties are calling it a mandate it's not a mandate <laughs> it's not a mandate so conservative media is saying this mainstream media is saying this and some lefty commentators are saying this nobody is being honest with you everybody's misleading you it's so disingenuous it's so dishonest to pretend this is just a mandate end of conversation if it was a mandate i would be against it it is not a mandate he's giving you the option of testing that means you don't actually have to take the vaccine. You could just take a test once a week. That is definitely not overly burdensome. Now, biggest part here, of course, he says, it's the most authoritarian move he's seen from a president in 20 years of American politics. Have you been hiding in a cave? Are you uh, like Tom Hanks in Castaway? Have you seen nothing that's gone on over the past 20 years? Ben, we did... Torture. Torture. We did extraordinary rendition. We totally eliminated habeas corpus and due process. We have Guantanamo Bay. We have the NSA illegally spying on all Americans. We did illegal and offensive wars based on lies. On lies. The most authoritarian move. You know what's authoritarian? The war on drugs. People who are nonviolent, who never hurt anybody, and now they get locked up for a decade because they decided to put a substance in their body on their own when they're not hurting anybody else? That is authoritarian, Ben. Torture is authoritarian. Getting rid of due process and habeas corpus, that's authoritarian. Illegal wars, that's authoritarian. The most authoritarian move is to give people the option 
of saving themselves by taking the vaccine or just testing to make sure they don't have the virus? Are you out of your mind? And the answer is no. He's just a hack. He's just a partisan hack. So let's run through a bunch of the stuff that he said. Um, so he says Biden is a failed president. A failed president? How? It depends on which action he took. What are you talking about? Um, there's a number of things he did that I think are fantastic. Raise the minimum wage through executive order for about 400,000 Americans. It applies to federal workers and it applies to um, federal government contractors, even tipped workers in that area. I think that's an absolutely wonderful thing. I think right to repair, which middle America, real salt of the earth, blue collar workers, it that helps them massively. Instead of you know, having to go to John Deere for them to rip you off to get their, you know, your farm equipment fixed, you can repair it yourself. Finally, for the longest time, there was this terrible rule that I guess John Deere had lobbied to put into place. Biden got rid of that. Now, has Ben said anything positive about that, even though most of his listeners are these sorts of Republican voters? No, because again, he's a liar and he's a partisan hack. It depends on the issue, Ben. Is there stuff that I'd criticize? Absolutely. He said he was going to give us $2,000 checks. All of a sudden it was down to 1400 you know, he didn't get us $15 minimum wage in the last COVID relief bill when he should have. So I, there's plenty of stuff to criticize, but, oh, Biden is a failed president. And what's his first example? This is how you know Ben is just a total idiot. He failed in Afghanistan. Oh, he failed in Afghanistan. So getting over 100,000 people out of the country in what, a two-week time span? That's a failure? We had 20 years of a war where we learned from the Afghanistan papers, we were lied to repeatedly. We allied with warlords with child sex slaves. We killed innocent people all the time. We were exploiting natural resources. We cared about the mineral wealth in Afghanistan and the opium and the oil in Iraq and all these different things. He had nothing to say to criticize 20 years of illegal occupation and killing innocent civilians. The thing he has a problem with is the way we pulled out of the war. The way we got out of the imperialist exploitation that we were engaged in. Getting over 100,000 people out is a massive success. As they said, the biggest airlift in U.S. history. That's probably correct. Over 100,000 people out. And there was, what, l less than 200 Americans who were left? And by the way, most of them were dual citizens. And by the way, most of them were like, I don't really want to go. They were trying to get them out for months beforehand, and they didn't, didn't want to get out. Somehow that's Biden's fault. Somehow that's a disaster. He said he failed the economy. On what planet did he fail the economy? Now listen, the economy in the U.S. has been terrible for decades because it's rigged by corporations and billionaires, of course. So if you're going to grade it on a scale, at the very least you have to say he's on par with Trump or better than Trump because we have job creation under Biden. You know, when we had the heart of COVID hit, it was a mess. We were hemorrhaging jobs under Trump. And also, Trump's main economic accomplishment was a tax cut for the wealthy, where 83% of the benefits went to the top 1%. Now, Ben likes that, though. He likes that. So that's why he thinks Trump was good with the economy and Biden's bad with the economy. So, I, I mean, it's just everything. He views everything in such a partisan, tribalist, hack way. Biden's a failed president. Democrats suck. Republicans are awesome. Rah, rah, on Ben Shapiro. How can anybody find this entertaining or interesting? I mean, this is like the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. Um, and then, okay, so let's get to some of the other stuff he said. He called what Biden did here a, quote, extremely harsh action. Is it harsh? Either get a vaccine or get a test. Ooh, so harsh to give people options. Um, now, there's one thing he says, which is true. He says it's sort of unlikely to be implemented. Um, that, I think, is correct in this sense. Yeah, OSHA doesn't have the manpower to, like, connect to all these businesses, talk to all these businesses, and follow up and make sure they do it. So really what you're doing is you're just sort of relying on the goodwill of people to listen to their government to one extent or another, to, for businesses to listen to the government. Now, where he's wrong is he says, well, nobody's going to comply. Well, that's not true because what we've seen up to this point is that whenever you have at a smaller level different vaccine mandates, people usually end up complying because not everybody's this rigid ideologue like Ben Shapiro. Uh, no, sir, how dare you take my life freedom and nobody gets it. No, I will not get the vaccine, therefore saving my life and maybe others. Most people are just like, well, I didn't really want it, but okay, I guess. That's what ends up happening. That's what all the data shows. There was, uh, what, there was one I read. I forgot what field it was in or what business it was in, but 
People were given seven weeks to comply. It was a, a company that made that said everybody's got to get the vaccine for our company. They were given seven weeks to comply. We're five weeks in, and they're fifty percent of the people who need to get the vaccine have gotten the vaccine. So they work. They increase the numbers massively. So when he says nobody's going to comply, that's definitely not true. What he's correct about is that there's really not an enforcement mechanism. So there probably won't be punishments if you don't do it. That's the other thing. Um, and then finally, at the end, he says, this is like Obama with immigration law. He said, well, I can't just stop enforcing immigration law. And then he just did it. I don't know what he's talking about here because Obama is called the deporter in chief. He deported more people than any president in American history. Now, look at how he portrays Obama, even though that's the case about Obama. He makes it seem like Obama was soft on immigration and he opened up the borders. That's the taste he's trying to leave in your mouth. But you know the reality that he's called the deporter in chief and he deported more than all the other presidents. So on what planet does this make sense? Ben Shapiro is either massively ignorant about this or he's a liar. There's no, there's no other option. He's ignorant or he's a liar. He either doesn't know even though he should or he knows and he's misleading you on purpose to try to make it seem like Obama was so soft on immigration. This is Ben Shapiro in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen. This, uh, this is, I mean, he's just dishonest or totally ignorant about the stuff he's supposed to know about. And then he talks about, I love this part. He says, oh, they said, uh, the Supreme Court said you can't do the eviction moratorium. Then they just did it. Good. <laughs> That's a thing I like. Now, by the way, the Supreme Court just slapped down that extended eviction moratorium. So we're sort of asked out and people are going to become homeless. But look at where Ben's concerns are. Ben doesn't, he's not, doesn't seem concerned at all about the tens of thousands or millions of people who are about to get evicted. He's more concerned that, uh, you need to make sure you follow the law and do the right thing. Well, if the law says we need to commit a genocide, what do you think, Ben? Is that something that you'd be like, but the law says it, so do it. That's, I mean, that's the kind of thinking this is. To be clear, he didn't say we should have a genocide, but he's saying the Supreme Court says, and the law says, you can't do an eviction moratorium. So yeah, let everybody get kicked out on the street. Let millions of people get kicked out on the street. Over 30% of people can't make rent. You should kick them all out. That's effectively what he's saying. So, like, this is something that would be a good thing that Biden did under pressure from Cory Bush, by the way. And he's not even telling you the total truth because, of course, they didn't just extend the previous eviction moratorium. They changed it up and did a new eviction moratorium and tweaked a lot of the provisions so that it would have to go through judicial review again, which is exactly what happened. So, but there you go. I mean, look, I'll leave it up to you guys. He, this is dictatorial. This is, he says dictatorial and authoritarian. Other people I'm sure have said dictatorial, authoritarian, fascist, tyrannical. Th this is Pol Pot and Hitler and Stalin and Mao for Joe Biden to care about public health and give people a choice between vaccines or getting a test once a week. It's one of the be better things that Biden did. And the meltdown only continues to prove to me how I actually think I hate the media more than I hate our politicians. And I hate our politicians a lot, so that's really saying something. Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.